If this magnet is moved towards and away from this qualifier, it induces an EMF in the coil. The current in the qualifier keeps on changing its direction. This induced current should have a direction such that it opposes the cause. Hello and welcome. In our last lesson, we talked about electromagnetic induction. If you have a magnet whose magnetic field lines can pass through a coil of wire, the number of magnetic field lines passing through the coil is called magnetic flux. If the magnet can move towards and away from this coil, then the number of magnetic field lines or the magnetic flux through the coil changes. And a changing magnetic flux through the coil induces an EMF in this coil. That is indicated by the movement of the needle on this voltmeter. If the number of turns is increased, a higher EMF can be induced in this coil. And if the area of this loop is increased as well, that also induces a higher EMF. And if the magnet is moved quickly, the EMF induced is much larger. So that means the induced EMF depends on the number of turns, area, and how quickly the flux changes through the coil of wire. And we actually expressed that in the form of an equation. Induced EMF is equal to number of turns N times delta phi over T. And there was a negative sign in this equation. Today, we are going to talk about that negative sign. Now, this negative sign in this equation is in accordance with another very important law called the Lenz's law. Before we dig deep into understanding the Lenz's law, let's recap that current carrying wire does have a magnetic field around it as well. And we can actually find the direction of that magnetic field using the right hand grip rule. So if you have a straight conductor and a current flows through that conductor, we could just point our thumb of the right hand in the direction of the current and curl the fingers of the right hand. The curling of the finger directs in the direction of magnetic field. So if the current is reversed, the direction of the magnetic field also gets reversed. And if instead of a straight conductor, we have a coil of wire through which a current is flowing, that coil of wire would have a magnetic field around it as well. And that magnetic field resembles the magnetic field of a bar magnet that has a north pole and a south pole. So you'd see these arrows pointing outwards from one pole and pointing inwards from the other pole. We can find the north pole by using the right hand grip rule again. But this time, the curling of the fingers is in the direction of the current. And the thumb is pointing in the direction of the north pole. So if the direction of the current is reversed, the north pole is also reversed. Keeping that in mind, let's go back to our simulation for Faraday's law. So coming back to our scenario, if this magnet is moved towards and away from this qualifier, it induces an EMF in the coil, and that causes a current to flow in this closed circuit. And you would see the direction of the arrows. As the magnet moves towards and away from the coil, the current in the qualifier keeps on changing its direction and its magnitude as well. Now, the Lenz's law tells us that this induced current should have a direction such that it opposes the cause that is producing it. And as stated earlier, a coil of wire that has a current flowing through it has a magnetic field of its own. So that means there is a magnetic field of this bar magnet that is approaching the coil. And when there is an EMF induced, the induced current will have its own magnetic field. And that magnetic field resembles the magnetic field of a bar magnet. So it has a north pole and a south pole. South pole. So that means as the magnet approaches the coil of wire, the induced magnetic field of the induced current is such that it opposes the incoming 
north pole of the magnet. So as the magnet moves towards the coil, the induced magnetic field opposes it and hence has a north. So approaching north pole would be repelled by the north pole of the coil. And as the magnet moves away from the coil of wire, with its north pole moving away from the coil, the coil would have a south pole to attract it. So this opposing force causes work to be done against the opposing force, and that work done appears as electrical energy as indicated by the movement of the needle. So that means, according to Lenz's law, the induced current has a direction such that it always opposes the course, and the course is actually the flux that is changing through this coil of fire. Now, this law has very important applications. First of them is in AC generator. Now, how does the AC generator work? What's the construction? You could look at that in detail in this video coming up on your screen. So I'll see you in that video.